Perils of Man is the port of an iOS point-and-click adventure game, developed by IF Games and designed by Bill Tiller and Gene Moxie, who previously worked on LucasArts games that I love, like The Curse of Monkey Island, Outlaws, The Dig, Full Throttle, and Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. After 10 years since the disappearance of the scientist Max Eberling, his daughter Anna starts looking for clues of his whereabouts. The investigation leads her to discovering a family secret which involves time travel and the possibility to detect perils in the environment. Darwin? Edgar. Edgar, is that you? My name is Anna, Darwin. My name is Thomas Eberling. Why do you think I'm Darwin? Because you're talking through him. The story is probably the strongest point of the game. While most of the characters aren't well developed and many inconsistencies are present, exploring the different places, interacting with the robot companion Darwin, and discovering all of the family secrets put this story above your average adventure game. The game doesn't look all that great, and it shows its nature as an iOS game. The character animations are really wooden, the lip syncing is really bad, the environments are small and lack detail and you can't interact with many objects. When moving from one room to the other there is a transition that usually results in weird clipping with the environment. Also, the pre-rendered cutscenes run at 40 FPS rather than the 60 FPS of the gameplay, which is really weird. The game is a simple point-and-click adventure in which you can pick up objects, use them and combine them. After a certain part of the game, you acquire some goggles which let you see the dangers in the environment. Unfortunately, they act more like a gimmick than anything being changed. These systems hold water, probably to put out fires. These furnaces are all we have got. The water in these systems are lower than usual. There are some puzzles which are either really easy to understand or require some incredibly unintuitive thinking making you feel more frustrated than smart. The only real challenge comes from the puzzles and your ability to beat them. Because of the small amount of exploration and items that you find, you will most likely try every combination possible until you figure them out. There is also a hint system which either spits out the solution to you or stays really cryptic. <laughs> no way! Wind it up, see what happens. It won't break. I don't have any idea. I don't have any ideas right now. Nothing special here. The voice acting is bearable, the sound effects are clear, and the soundtrack suits the tone of the game, even though it's really forgettable. Skilled players will beat the game in more or less two hours, while others will require more time to figure out some of the hardest puzzles. There are no bonuses by completing the game, and all the 14 achievements are unlocked by playing the game. So there is no reason to come back, rather than thoroughly exploring the environments. Overall, adventure game fans of modern titles like A Vampire Story, Hank and Ghost Pirates of Buju Island will love this game, while the hardcore fans will be put off by the simplistic puzzles and small environment interaction. The key fits! I'll wind it up! <sighs> Nothing. It looks like he's missing some parts. <laughs>